So let me understand that. What you're basically saying is that the role of e-commerce is to provide competitive pricing. Uh, let me say perceiving it. All right. So it's a good point, um, and it's a good ice-breaking mechanism. If that is the case, one way or the other, we want them to adopt e-commerce, get used to the idea of e-commerce, and uh, provide them with opportunities and options which may or may not exist um, offline, uh, and get them used to the convenience of shopping online. So let me say that the initial. Uh, movement into e-commerce has been facilitated by discounting and it was very essential in the initial. Um, many companies burnt themselves and died but it was an essential part of uh, the that was pioneering efforts uh, to, to create a marketplace to begin with and then it is how you keep on evolving a marketplace. So I think uh, uh, in times to come uh, you should be going more for uh, unique opportunities of what you can buy outside of buying the the same Nokia phone here or for 200 rupees less online. And that's what the consumer behavior will become. We will easily cross around 15 to 16 percent in three years. Three years e-commerce, our e-commerce division will, will at least deliver 15 percent of our sales. 15 percent of our sales but it will deliver 40% of our profits yeah. because uh, there are the costs involved in e-commerce are much lower than a brick and mortar. And there, there are no rents, there is no capex, there is no uh, there is uh, there is no renewal of capex, there is there is there is no staffing, there is I mean so many administrative distances, logistics, all of those are kind of taken care of in e-commerce. So we may give 15% of our sales, but we'll give 40% of our profits. Who's the consumer? It is the young consumer. It is the young consumer who's hooked on to the, the, the online life and not so much the 30 plus consumer. So uh, let's say the, the consumer or the consumer who is today 15 or 16 or 17 lives half their lives uh, online. So imagine when they come up to be 20 or maybe 25 when they are now uh, financially independent and are able to um, you know, use their decision making to do what they want to do with their money. There will be a there will be a huge explosion of um, of traffic of consumption online, things which are already happening in the more developed countries. So, um, uh, so I believe Japan has some 15 percent of its retail consumption happening online today. I think U.S. is around seven percent, and I think China, in this little short time, with so much money gone into China in e-commerce, is already in the late teens. So those are very scary numbers also for me to, it's just a gigantic numbers that seem to come up and I think India will, uh, with its youth and its population bias towards youth, uh, is bound to happen. There are multiple things happening at the same time, so nothing really needs to be done as done. Uh, when you look into penetration of smartphones or tablets or phablets, uh, that is exponentially growing. And I think sometime whenever Alliance is able to launch its 4G services in India, bundled with hardware and multiple, uh, let's say, uh, data-based applications as opposed to voice-based applications. That itself could actually increase the penetration rate of smart devices dramatically. The Bharat Broadband Scheme, which has been talking uh, talked about in the last three, four years, uh, being headed by Mr. Sam Petroda. And if it is the question of connecting about 200,000 panchayats, of whatever the numbers are, uh, with a dedicated fiber optic network, you will also see penetration of uh, this pipeline digital, even in villages in India. So many of these changes are actually happening at the same time. So in our view, 2016 would probably be the tipping point where we will begin to see not only just in urban India, but small town India and rural India, penetration of e-shopping. Uh, this phenomena is a universal phenomena. It is uh, now known as showrooming. So uh, world over retailers are grappling with this challenge. Uh, even much more in the developed countries like the USA, that customers will walk uh, confidently into a department store or a, a hypermarket equivalent or whatever it is, look for the price, look for the product, and using an app, there itself find out 
which is the one who's giving cheapest, wherever that uh, the cheapest is there, just go home. So even if they are actually not sure about the product attributes, quality, uh, touch and feel, they do all of this in a physical shop, but then they will go online because now there is no risk in their mind. Whosoever can give it cheapest, they do that. All over the world, people are rational. It's not only India. Uh, even if you're an American with a significant amount of income, you have to be really crazy to pay more than what you should be paying. So if I'm into department store A in America, and I see the same uh, Lee pair of jeans being retailed at $49, and on my app, on my cell phone, somebody says it's available from some other retailer, maybe, or some online channel at $42. I'll just go home or maybe go to the parking lot in my car only, I'll place an order. Or maybe I'll sit in the uh, coffee shop in the, uh, in the same uh, shopping mall and place an order at $42. And the $7 is my saving on that coffee. There. So in India, this is very less right now because most people are not aware. So this is still a phenomenon which is due to, to do with, uh, let's say, electronics to some extent. Uh, there. But we will see this rapidly changing and expanding in terms of number of categories uh, within the next three to five years. One hybrid model which could be for brands, not retailers, uh, could be that they take up a small space in a shopping mall, but keep no merchandise. They only have display merchandise and then you have got uh, digital tablets. And if the customer likes your merchandise, they say, we'll take your order if you don't want to place on your own. We'll just place, place it through us. In fact, if you place it through us right now, we'll give you a discount because you don't want the customer to go away. And he or she may not place an order. And then you say, it'll be delivered to your home from a local warehouse, wherever it is, within 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, or whatever the lead time might be. And customers, it is our belief in Technopack that customers will be comfortable with that. Very few customers want something like right now. USA, for example, there's a retailer called Bonobos, B-O-N-O-B-O-S, and uh, they have now these physical stores, physical quote unquote. They were earlier pure online, and many other brands are now thinking about saying that let's go from online to physical, but the difference is they are not putting physically large stores of 5,000, 50,000 square feet. Whatever your product is, let the customer touch and feel experience it if required, but transaction is only done there, but goods are not stocked and delivered from there. Oh yes, in fact, see what is happening is, and I think we need to probably uh, understand it very clearly, the catchments are shrinking. The time available to the individual consumer to shop and get the products in hand is coming down. However, the desire and aspiration of the Indian is going up. I mean, these are two contrasts. So in this, what is it that you would like to do? You would like to serve the largest assortment at the nearest point of purchase for the consumer. So I am definitely seeing a model which is a combination of brick and mortar and e-commerce, uh, what is being referred to as omni-channel. And in India, because the e-commerce penetration through mobile and tablets are happening faster than the PCs, so therefore shopping on the move is likely to be the way things will happen. And because shopping on the move is going to happen, Therefore, you'll find a brick and mortar plus an e-commerce combination actually being very successful. Uh, there are issues which are going to be more regulatory issues because I think uh, uh, the government as well as the industry is confused on where the policies are going. But if you put all this together, I think in the next three to five years, you'll see the omni-channel business emerging as a very strong contender. Oh yes, yes. See, eventually if you look at it, price will play an important role. But more than price, to me, value and convenience is going to play a much more important role. And in convenience, the value is already priced in. Okay, and let's not forget that the merchandise sales, the merchandise retailing is competing with a lot many things, which are all got to do with time. So if I have, let's say, three and a half hours on a weekend, I have an option to shop, dine, or see a movie. Okay, or even go to a spa and have a nice massage. For all the four, if I'm going alone, I'll spend 1,500 rupees. If you're going with a family, spend 4,500 rupees. So the question is, who is going to take the 4,500 out of my pocket? So therefore, you will actually find that it will be more convenience-based and, and the choices are going to be cross-category choices. So it will be very unfair for somebody to say that my competition is with another apparel retailer. No, if the consumer has decided this weekend not to shop with you and go to see a movie, your competitor is a movie guy who's probably taken away the three hours of time and 4,000 rupees. E-retailing has a huge potential. The consumers 
are shifting their behaviors, not only from uh, experience perspective, now they're also seeking convenience as the number of working people increases, double in, uh, income in the families is increasing. This is clearly a highly underpenetrated category. Therefore, for QSR industry per se, we are already experiencing this format growing at more than double digit uh, rates. Uh, consumers are asking for more and more home deliveries. They are looking for more and more uh, web ordering, ordering through mobile, uh, etc. It is very important to consider how e-retailing is going to impact the retail real estate, i.e. the physical space in front-end retail. You know, clearly we see that there is going to be more and more retailers moving on to e-commerce. Uh, it's not only about Amazon, it's also about how Marks & Spencer's, Debenhams, uh, CNA, they are getting into the e-retailing and a large part of their business today is coming in from e-retailing. Is this going to impact the demand for physical retail real estate? Absolutely. But on the whole, we believe that there is going to be physical retail real estate that will continue to expand and equally e-commerce will continue to expand. So the market size is going to grow rather than e-commerce eating into the physical retail real estate part. Well, I think e-retail is actually gaining ground. Uh, what started small is certainly building up uh, as a channel of sale. E-retailers might not be making money, but that's a different issue. Uh, I think as a channel of sale, it's certainly uh, becoming a lot bigger and more omnipresent today than what it used to be even last year. Categories which I think uh, which, got, which got immediately impacted were categories such as books, music, movies, uh, electronic accessories. Those are the kind of categories which got immediately impacted. But I think uh, when you look at it uh, on a longer term basis, apparel is certainly an area which today is becoming a lot stronger. Uh, on e-retail because I think for simple purchases, for seasonal sales, uh, all of that, people are comfortable actually buying on, on a website. So it's slowly now spreading to accessories, especially handbags, footwear, sunglasses, watches, those kind of categories. So I don't, I mean, I think it's a trend which is only going to increase. Uh, today it is small, it's probably less than half percent of the total Indian retail market. But if you look at, say, markets like the U United States, it's about 7-8%. Uh, Europe is also reasonably large. So China is actually growing quite significantly. So there is no reason why India cannot be, even if it is 1%, it will probably you know, quadruple the size of the e-commerce market today. Uh, so I, I foresee that uh, there is a lot of investment, there is a lot of interest, and there is much greater internet penetration. So every single positive factor currently exists for the growth of e-retail in this country. Online or the e-retail uh, standpoint, clearly I see e-retail becoming or getting more and more important in the Indian context because you do have a lot of limitations in terms of infrastructure in the industry. So while brick and mortar, uh, the service at brick and mortar is evolving and dramatically so, and organized retail is getting bigger and bigger in the India context. What I also see is a possibility for online retail to become more and more important and take the opportunity from the fact that there are some infrastructure constraints. There's not enough good retailing. It's not easy to hire great uh, retail brand ambassadors as staff. So I see a big opportunity there. And I also see online retailers addressing the issues that are typically there in any new industry where the consumer is not sure, they don't want to share the credit card details or they don't want to. So, and retailers are evolving quite rapidly and adapting to the consumer. So, eventually, again, it finally comes down to if you're able to deliver to the consumer's expectations and over a period of time lead the consumer expectations, there is opportunity for uh, online retail and I see online retailers doing that already to a large extent. E-retailing is very different. E-retailing, the consumers are very price sensitive. They're always looking for a bargain. We have e-retailing, and we're using that to collect data, to understand India, which city, 
which state, which pin code is buying the products. That helps us in the future to go to that market. It, it is a very small percentage of our business, but we look at 10 years from now, or five years, we'll be at least 20% of our retail business will come from e-retail. I think we haven't reached, you know, a tipping point stage at all still. A tipping point probably will come in, in three, four years time. Uh, we are still, you know, at the very nascent stage of e-retailing. Uh, we, as in Domino's Pizza in India, are the market leaders. Uh, and why I'm saying this is still, having done all that, 20% of our revenue, of our deliveries today actually are booked through the internet, of which 10% come through the mobile application, through the mobile phones. If I look at, and we are the leaders, so talk of everybody else, probably a minuscule one, single digit percentage actually of their, uh, you know, business actually comes through retailing. So it's still very early days. Tipping points will happen much later. I think the first thing is where every other, you know, retailer, food retailer, uh, food service retailer actually ends up having, you know, a conduit through the internet where you can place the order and it can be delivered to your home or you could go and consume it, you know, on, on, on the site. So to my mind, that is the next big thing. For us, you know, we believe in a few years time, in terms of number of transactions, we could be one of the highest transacted category, you know, as is evidence from other parts of the world. I mean, if I go to, you know, a Domino's in Australia or UK or for more than 50, 60% of our business is actually booked through the net. It's all e-daily. So we believe we will also reach that stage as Domino's as a company and even the industry will kind of move forward. Everybody wants to jump into e-commerce. That's an easier business for you. You don't have to have infrastructure, make a product and sell it. For us, it is, again, like I said, it's slightly different for us. Uh, we need to ensure that we tie up with the right partner. You know, the right part, the partner portrays us in the right way. So that's the reason we haven't gone bizarre and signed with all the e-commerce. We only tied up with Maitra now. Let's understand the market, okay? Though Maitra is doing a good business for us, but it's too early for us to say. We are only like two months with them now. So we will have to give it a season at least to understand, you know, how it's going to produce. What people like, what people don't like. Like I said, being human was earlier always known as a t-shirt brand because people are only seen t-shirt. Online dynamics are as different from brick and mortar as black and white TV is from color TV. It's a different world. You've got to get your dynamics of online completely separate. Your brick and mortar are completely separate, but make sure that you put both of them together in the perfect way to create barriers for either those who are only brick and mortar or for those who are only online. Today I hear, I attended many sessions here. I heard people who were very scared because they have only brick and mortar and they're getting killed by online pricing. And I heard a lot of online people saying, I'm getting killed by the fact that brick and mortar can give better experience of touch and feel. Those who can create the perfect barrier, create walls. First of all, I don't understand why a brick and mortar would be scared of online. I think it's the biggest example of what they are not doing, which is get online. A lot of people here spoke to me saying, I have a single brand I sell from allied internet sources, which is they give their product to four or five other retailers like a Jabong will sell their t-shirt. It's great, that means the brand is selling there. Why are you scared of the fact that there is acceptance for that and it's not coming so much from your brick and mortar. Tomorrow when you go online with the right strategy, with the right marketing and new age marketing tools, you will do fantastic. So the in incredible potential and opportunities that are starting to come, I call the screen of the smartphone the greatest show stop of all times. It is your storefront, it is the entrance, it is the window display to what you would have as a shop. So that's the greatest shop front of them all. And as soon as people start to realize that, it'll be amazing. Imagine a world where you walk into a store, it's either brick and mortar or online, and as you walk through, you go up and let's say you're picking up a particular kind of, uh, let's say a food. You don't have to find any more information about it, you just take your phone, it scans it, it gives you all the information. You know everything about that. It also tells you the other three that are the competition and what it could do for you. It also tells you, let's say it's a food product. Let's say, as Mr. Ajit Joshi gave me an example, there's a store that had pasta. The minute you buy pasta, 
your phone will tell you take a right and a left past the sauce is here take another left the cheese is here and it will give you three menu recipes with that now that's called the true power of retail and it's coming those who will adapt it will be great they say technology is like a road roller either you're driving it or you're going to be crushed and become part of the road right so hopefully you'll be driving the road roller not becoming part of the road